there Gemini welcome to your January and February 2018 bliss report now in case you're wondering what that means bliss report in 2017 I did a series of videos just about every other month where I would look at two months at a time and talk about abundance so whether it was your career, your money situation. And I did this because I already do love readings and I wanted to kind of focus on that other area because that is also something that people are interested in. And when I was set to do the readings for the new year, for some reason, it just didn't speak to me. I felt like it's not just about money. Yes, of course, that's the vehicle for a lot of these things to occur, but it's like it's it's like a lot of people get caught in that trap of just pursuing the money thinking that the bliss is going to follow when really I think it's the opposite. There was a book I don't know if it was the 80s I think it was called Do What You Love and the Money Will Follow. And I am more of the belief that that's how you get to that point is that you start with doing things that bring you bliss and the money is naturally going to accompany that. If you are doing things that actually uh, you can place monetary value on. And then there are some people who may be retired and they're, they don't need to earn money or maybe you don't need to earn money because your spouse earns money, but you still want to be happy and there's things that you want to accomplish. And so that's what this reading is about. And it's highly symbolic, which I kind of like because there's more freedom in that. You know, we don't have to deal with dates or anything like that, but I am kind of containing it to this period of time. And if any astrological insights come up for Gemini, I'll certainly mention those as well. So I'm going to put these two decks, they're more like oracle decks, to the side for the time being. Actually, this one is a type of a tarot deck, but doesn't have the same number of cards. I'm going to start with this. This is uh, my Morgan Gerd tarot deck. Do a simple spread with this and one oracle card from each of those, or you know, one card for each of those. These cards, these uh, Kashuk Tarot cards are so thick, and which is really good because it means they're good card stock. But they're, <laughs> it's like picking one card is quite a, a, a task. Okay, I think this is one card. Add some? Your guess is as good as mine what that means. It sounds Latin. Okay. And this is the Keepers of the Light. Okay. So we got our cards. Okay, so the heart of the matter for this time period, starting 2018, is the Five of Wands. This is a card of competition. You know, this can be a card that connects to struggle sometimes, or conflict. And so, I mean, what could that possibly be? It's, it's interesting. Let me just talk about the past position here, which doesn't seem to go along with that, because the Magician card is taking control of your life, and knowing that you have the possibility to co-create your reality. So 
how does that jibe with that heart of the matter? Okay, well, we don't have to get too hung up on the heart of the matter means, you know, heart of the matter could be something that was even in your in the past position connected to the magician and why you took certain actions. Because the, the five of wands feels to me like a dog-eat-dog -dog type of energy. So in your life, if you were in an environment, Gemini, where you felt like you had to step all over other people or it was just like promoted by the powers that be that that's what it means to to prove your worth or that you even had to prove your worth the magician card is all about realizing that that struggle is your choice that you can end the struggle okay now, <laughs> that is a very hard thing to explain because I get it. I really, really get it. When you are experiencing something, it's hard to think that there are any other possibilities. But let me just quote a, it's a, an illustration that I have that is actually, I don't know what you call it, um, this woman makes these inspirational like they're kind of like watercolors and um, and then she sells them it's on some kind of like poster board so if you can hang it up and it, it shows uh, I'm not going to bring it out here but it shows a bird in a cage and then another bird like zooming out into the sky because that bird is free so in one moment it was caged and then in another moment it was free and it says below the painting or illustration, don't ever believe that where you are now is your only possibility. I, I find that one of the most profound things that I've ever read because it's so easy to believe that where you are in this moment is where you're going to be a year from now. Gemini is a mutable air sign, so you're perfectly capable of changing your tune and changing your thoughts. However, um, we are not just our sun signs or our rising signs, and you may have Taurus right next to, the sign Taurus is right next to Gemini, so you might have personal planets or the moon there, and it, or your rising sign, and it can be a lot more deeply ingrained in you that you can't change things. But something for some of you may have come along, some kind of inspiration that connects with co-creation or the law of attraction, something where you, Jim and I, are starting to understand this principle that you are capable of changing a reality by taking inspired action. And the spiritual message is the Wheel of Fortune. So the Wheel of Fortune is a card that relates to um, alignment as far as I'm concerned. People would say luck. Oh, you're having, you're having a, a string of luck here. But I think we make our own luck. And I think that, of course, you know, there are transits. This connects to the, the planet Jupiter. And... Um, that can be, you know, like, where is Jupiter for you? Jupiter is in your sixth house in Scorpio, transiting that house for Gemini. So the sixth house can deal with health, it can deal with work. You may feel like all of a sudden you have a lot of great work opportunities that you didn't have. I don't know. But, or maybe you're going to have that happen in 2018. And just kind of like this um, embarrassment of riches, but I don't even like the word embarrassment, this <laughs> glorious display of riches when it comes to, you know, being able to pick and choose the type of work that you do. Or maybe you'll work for yourself because the five of wands may convince you that you don't want to be in that situation. But there's a sense of alignment 
for those who are maybe more conscious and really kind of um, taking responsibility for your own life and your own happiness. Because obviously all Geminis are not at the same uh, level of spiritual advancement. Some are asleep and some are um, woke, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> that term kind of makes my skin crawl sometimes, but um, you got to got to say things. Um, you know, some people are awake and some people are asleep. And Geminis are no different. And if you are aware spiritually, you know more and more that you are in control of your destiny. Of course, things do happen that you may not be able to control, and we can't get to this point where we think we can control everything. We have to be able to let go and let God when appropriate, and I think that you're also aware of that, but just that idea that it's even possible to to have any, to take any inspired action, I think is a definite improvement. What crosses you is represented by the world card. So perhaps for some of you, you have unfinished business. This is the last card of the Major Arcana, and um, it may be that you want to advance in some way. Maybe you want to actually travel. This is a travel card, sometimes long distances, but there are things that you have to kind of wrap up. Maybe, uh, let's say you have a child who is um, finishing their school year, and you don't want to take them out of class or out of their, their um, school until the end of the semester or the school year. You don't want to disrupt them that much. Or maybe you're being advised not to. The other thing, too, is that you may have other things that you need to do before you can um, leave one phase of life. So maybe there was something you kind of quit doing. Uh, the the card of the world card can also be like graduating. You know, they talk about graduation day. So maybe this has to do with some kind of course that you dropped out of that you need to complete. And maybe it has nothing to do with the academic world. Maybe it's some other kind of training or just something spiritually that you were involved with that would really benefit you and you kind of um, let it go, felt that you couldn't do it, and there's something that still needs completion. The advice that's coming in uh, for you is represented by the Queen of Swords. This is about head over heart. Uh, this is your card in the sense that the swords relate to the air signs like Gemini. And there may be, maybe there's a decision that you need to make that, um, especially with that world card, um, that could be dealing with travel plans being put on hold, that world card in the challenge position. And the being put on hold may have to do with something that you are resisting that you are very emotional about. So there's someone that you need to leave, but you can't bring yourself to do it. And there's a whole new life waiting for you, but it's very difficult to cut those ties. I mean, I could, I could just speculate, but something that, I mean, you're being advised to really be logical about a situation and not over being emotional. And it's funny, I got the queen and the king, so we could be talking about mother and father too. This is the outcome, king of wands. This is a much more uh, yang energy. So this has a mixture, but this is yang, which is masculine energy, very good for leadership abilities. And this sense of 
decisiveness, I would say, too, but also a sense of entrepreneurship. And that possibly could be connected to the world card and the magician card that you are looking to promote some product and maybe even over, take it overseas. And the King of Wands is a very confident person. It, this could be a person that can help you uh, to distribute this product or to launch it. Um, again, this is uh, mother and father energies. And if you are a female Gemini, uh, this male could be a an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. Or just simply showing the masculine principle, but this is the father. This could be the father of your child. And maybe for some of you, your bliss is becoming a mother. But perhaps you're becoming a mother in a very Gemini-esque kind of way where you're not necessarily nesting your thinking. You know, you're, you're, the wheels are turning. Maybe you're going back to school or to get gain while you're pregnant or, you know, whatever. Maybe you're, you've already given birth, but you're not necessarily in the workforce. You're more um, sharpening your mind. As I said, with the World Card graduation day put on hold, maybe um, you're raising a child and going back to school to get to, to finish your bachelor's degree or your master's degree, who knows, or some kind of a certification, so that when your child gets a little bit older, you can be right back into that career that you want to enhance. Okay, so that's very interesting, okay? I, I think so. So let's look at these. Um, but this could, I just want to say this could be a facet of yourself where you feel confident to promote something in the world and you feel that what you have is worthwhile. Um, this, the Queen of Swords, there could be, you know, doubt has an emotional basis, right? Doubt is based upon not having the confidence about a particular thing, whether it's your viability about something that you have created or if you're trying to take action and, and you're not sure that you're going to succeed. There's doubt in that. So with the King of Wands, so so basically this is saying to be able to, to put aside those emotions and just focus on the mental energy and, and uh, doing what you need to do without being held back by, by uh, emotions and then taking that confident step forward and, and feeling that sense of empowerment with the King of Wands. Okay, so I'm going to speak about this card. That's an interesting card. Looks like she's being visited by angels or something. Very, very curious card. Let's see what it stands for. This must be the, the Akashic Records uh, Major Arcana because it's a numbered card. A candle casts light on an open book held... I'm going to put this right here so you can see it while I'm... Held by a young woman sitting at a desk. Her eyes are drawn to the side as if she were distracted from her reading by a curious thought or someone nearby. She is surrounded by several people, many of whom are somewhat translucent and glowing. An angel bends and whispers, Add some, I arrive. I am here. I attend you. Add some is a single word that has many, many meanings. First, it affirms your own strength and focus in the present. You can use it as a command word when you find yourself distracted from what is at hand. Say, add some, I am here, and feel yourself attend to the situation or person before you. 
This word also declares your arrival at your goals and all your wishes coming true. Say, at some I arrive and take a moment to see yourself reaching your goals absolutely. Whenever you get your card, this card, know that you're on your way to the results you seek with the help of others and the glorious help of spirit. This card also reminds you to be assured that no matter what is happening to you in your life, spirit is always there for you. They reach out to you, sharing their light and power and serving you in every way, from the least to the highest, from grandma to the divine. An eternal community attends you. Say, add some and take some time to attend them too. You can act on your promise to God as spirit lifts you upon their shoulders. You are present for each other and together you arrive at your dreams. Hmm. I still would like to know, you know, the meaning, like, is that, is that a Latin word? Okay, and this one is very, I love the artwork in this uh, Keepers of the Light. It says, Freya, or Freya, phases and cycles, there's a beginning within every ending, illusions are revealed and released. You know, I was just commenting upon this, I think in one of my astrological readings about January. And I was noting, you know, we have this two full moons in one month. We just had the Cancer moon, full moon, and we're having one in Leo, which is happening on the um, 31st of the month, uh, a, a full moon, which is actually a lunar eclipse. And lunar eclipses are supposed to be times when things are taken away. And, I mean, that's not the only possibility, but that's like the big, the big um, explanation of what that represents. And I was thinking, you know, people might get a little bit anxious about that because, oh my God, what am I going to lose? And I, I've stated that, you know, with every ending, there's all, there's automatically a beginning. So... It's really almost kind of silly to talk about endings because it's both. It's uh, ending one way to make room for another. And the more that we can live in the moment and not worry about things that we can't control, but also thinking that, there, that the universe would ever work against us. When we can really rest easy in whatever happens in the outer world that's when equanimity is truly present when you feel that sense of balance and and peace really so this card let me just so you can see it closer such a beautiful image let me see what it says I don't know how to say it. I'm, I'm assuming it's Freya. You know, it's funny. I was just talking to my partner about the Norse uh, people and how he was he was saying how they you know what what um, how they were exploring you know everywhere in the world and and things like that and they said Freya which means lady is the Norse goddess of the moon and love. Oh, she is the twin flame of Odin and a warrior goddess who offers deep spiritual and physical protection to those who call on her. She will stand before you with her shield and spear, keeping you from, safe from harm. She works closely with moon energy and helps us to recognize that our life is a cycle that is always changing. She herself is the maiden, the mother, and the crone aspect of all women and guides them to see the wisdom of these cycles bring. We all go through phases and cycles of growth, and Freya is the energy that supports this. She has a raven spirit totem, which is said to represent her capacity to travel between heaven and earth. A phase of your life may be coming to an end, but it's important to acknowledge that it's not the end. When one door closes, another opens. You may have been desperate for change, but now that it's here, you could feel vulnerable. Know that the mighty goddess Freya will guide you. 
Illusions are now being revealed so that you can leave behind anything that is false. Step into your peaceful warrior-like energy and welcome the changes you deserve. Tie up all loose ends. Oh my God. <laughs> what did I just say? <gasps> oh, I love it. And take heart. This is an exciting time. <laughs> wow. Okay. I think I'm going to get a few chills, even though it's only one degree Fahrenheit or in the single digits right now. I'm talking about a different type of chill. I'm, I have nothing further to say, Gemini. I wish you all the best. And if you would like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is rainandmoonastrology.com. I, you know, take care, you guys. Bye.